know the drill. to a group, uh, I think it was Occupy New Hampshire Facebook or planning committee on Facebook and that's where I learned about that people were planning to have an occupation patient here in New Hampshire. And um, did you, um, I think the jury's heard a little bit about the first um, uh, uh, general assembly that was in Arms Park in Manchester. Did you attend that? I did. And was that the first time that you were involved in an Occupy event? Yes. Um, and uh, we're not going into t too much detail. Can you can you give the jury a little bit uh, of an idea about what happened at that General Assembly in Arms Park? Well, we all got we all got together um, in Arms Park. There are about um, 200, 300 of us, and we want the uh, first we decided where we would hold the occupation. And um, I, I was very, and I think the two options were uh, Manchester and Concord during that General Assembly. Uh, there were other options, but those two were the most popular. And I remember arguing very strongly at the assembly for Manchester because um, I felt that Manchester is the working class home of, uh, of New, of New Hampshire, and it's where all the immigrants and all the homeless and disenfranchised are. It's where my, my meme, my great-grandmother worked as mill workers, and I felt very strongly that we would reach out to the most people who would support our message and who need our help if we occupied in Manchester. And um, we eventually... Okay, okay, that's good. Let me ask you another question. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, how uh, Occupy made decisions. We haven't heard about that yet. Yes. How, 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 does, um, how did this group come to a decision about, number one, they were going to Occupy, and number two, where to Occupy? Do you want to set object at this point as to, as to relevance? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the council some leeway to, to defend it. You'll have your opportunity to cross. Well, um, the can you repeat the question, please? What's the process? There was, or was there a special process that uh, the Occupy movement had for reaching consensus and a decision? Yes, um, in Occupy Wall Street, they developed the General Assembly, which is a um, or a GA, which is a horizontal uh, democracy where everyone, uh, a consensus-based democracy where everyone gets to go up and speak their mind and uh, get in a line and um, vote on things together. Um, and there were hand signals for this. Like I remember uh, people were talking about Dr. Cunha using the point of process. We had our, um, we had our own amplification system called the People's Microphone where one person would 
would say mic check, and then everyone would repeat mic, mic check, and then you would speak in small phrases, um, and they would all be repeated so that everyone could hear them in this. Okay, and, and the reason for that is very simply, you guys didn't have loudspeakers or amplification devices, did you? Well, originally that was the reason when um, they started uh, occupying Zuccotti Park, they weren't allowed to have amplification devices in New York City, but... Let's, um, let's bring it a little bit closer to the answer, okay. Yeah, um, but, but um, it also fosters um, a, uh, a sense of unity where everyone is listening to each other because they're all repeating what the speaker is saying. Let me um, bring you right along to uh, the first day of the occupation itself. And um, that was uh, October 15th, is that correct? Correct. Was there a particular moment in time when the occupation was to begin? Um, it was to begin on October 15th. At, at what time? Oh, um, I think it was noon. Okay. Uh, were you in Veterans Park at noon on October 15th? I was. What did you see? Um, I saw about 400 people with um, signs and such uh, showing up to attend the first general assembly we had in Veterans Park. And what were the um, topics of discussion at that first general assembly? Um, I, I don't remember all of them, but, we, but one of the main topics of uh, discussion was um, moving the the occupation to uh, Victory Park temporarily because we had gotten, or someone in Occupy had gotten notice from the Manchester Police Department that there would be a foot race for the Fallen on that Sunday, that following Sunday, and we want and we eventually voted to move it to Victory Park um, in solidarity with the police department, I guess, and out of respect. So, uh, Victory Park is what about three or four blocks that away? Uh, yeah, it's across the street from the library. It's, yeah. And how did um, how did the occupiers move themselves from Veterans Park to Victory Park? Well, we had um, a, we had a bunch of committees we had set up. We had a, like a logistics committee and um, a, a, like and I guess the, the logistics com committee and the safety committee like handled most of like the moving tents, like helping people move tents and such over to Victory Park. Uh, how many tents were set up that first night in Victory Park? Hmm. I, I don't know how many tents there were, but there must have been about 50 people camping out, so 20 tents, 25, I guess in that area. Um, uh, you wanted, uh, the reason for the occupation, at least one of the occupations, was to express certain messages, is that right? Correct. Right. Um, how did you, how did you go about expressing these messages or getting these messages across? Oh, um, I was actually part of the arts committee and, um, I, I helped buy a bunch of, um, supplies, a bunch of markers for, uh, and poster boards for people to take and write their own messages on, and everyone pretty much wrote their own messages they wanted to share.
to show you four photographs and ask if uh, this is representative of the signage that you saw while you were in um, uh, the occupying veterans in Victory Park. Take a look at all four of them. personal knowledge that these were signs that were uh, held, created and held up during the four days of the occupation? I know that those three, I, defi I definitely like, uh, or the, those two I definitely lent supplies to, so those were, those were, or, uh, sorry, those two were definitely, uh, I helped with, and um, that one, that one I know was in the park too, I know, uh, I think Mike brought that sign. That one, I know, I, I think that was actually a, a, a previous sign from an anti-war rally the week before, and someone brought it back to the park and also used that during Occupy. Uh, Substitute objection, full exhibit. fair represented representation of the kinds of messages that were being expressed. Correct. Okay. Mr. Jerry, just you can you can publish it if you want or about this one in particular. This is Defendant Exhibit E. It's a little different than the others. It's a sign that says, please do not drink alcohol in the park. Is that right? Correct. Um, what, what was your experience while you were I I I in the occupation? Um, was there drinking? Was there drugging there? I did not see any drinking. However, um, there were some uh, individuals who came into the park who weren't associated, who I don't believe were associated with the Occupy movement, who may have been inebriated, or but I, I didn't have a breathalyzer. I don't know if they were mentally ill or inebriated or what. But we did. Um, it was, apparently it was enough of an issue that we decided uh, during our GA that we should make it more clear um, that we should make a more clear no drugs or alcohol policy and make a sign to put in the park. And uh, is that how this sign came about? Correct. I think that might even be my right. <laughs> Hygiene. We ha we actually had a um, uh, one of the committees we developed was the health and safety committee. I don't know if they were two separate committees or the same one, but we uh, we did uh, we we took some of the donations and we raised about five hundred dollars to buy about three or four porta potties, and we brought those to uh, Victory Park, and we brought fewer of them back to Veterans Park, but they were still there. 
What did you do about food? Uh, uh, a nice fellow that uh, joined Occupy, Joey Burns, had an RV, and he set the RV up by, uh, next to Victory Park, and um, he collected, um, he, he would uh, receive the food from the, don the donations and the logistics committee, and he'd set it up in, in the RV, and people would eat a meal every night and every morning. And he'd serve it out to um, not only the occupiers, but um, anyone who needed food. We heard a little bit. I, I don't know whether the jury caught it. There was some brief reference to that RV. At some point, was did the police ask the RV to be moved? I believe so. I'm kind of hazy on the details around that matter. But um, as far as you know, if the police asked for anything, did the occupiers comply? Correct. There was someone with drums the first night? Correct. And um, there might have been a complaint that they were too noisy, is that right? I w yeah, I was sitting with the guy with the drums. We were like doing some music after dark, singing old protest songs, and I guess Someone complained that there was that it was too loud, so we decided to um, stop drumming at a certain hour and resume it at nine or ten in the morning. Um. So, how many? Uh, do, did I ask you this already? How many tents were there in Victory Park? Yeah, um, twenty or twenty-five, maybe. About how many people? Fifty, like the first night, uh, the first few nights. Fifty Sleeping people. Over. Not. 50 people create litter. What did you folks do about litter? Um, we we had um, we told everyone to pick up their own trash. Obviously, I think there were other signs, uh, keep the park clean and this and that. But we uh, I'm not sure which com which committee was in charge of that. But we handled the litter. Did um, did the Occupy movement? cause any damage whatsoever to either Victory or Veterans Park? No. Now I want to bring you to October 19th, the night uh, of what the state's calling, I guess, the enforcement. Um, <clears throat> were you present in uh, Veterans Park at about 9 o'clock? Uh, I was there by 10 o'clock. So you didn't see uh, Captain Kuna uh, the first time he approached the group? No, I was gone for a few hours. But when you came, you came back at what, what time? Around 10. And were you um, quickly informed that the um, encampment would be uh, removed that night? Yeah, I was actually informed before that because um, one of the occupiers sent me a text that, uh, that the police had come and I rushed back. So I, I need to ask you, I mean, um, the state has said that every occupier was given a choice, and the choice was to leave the park um, at 11 o'clock, to stay in the park and get a, uh, a, a um, summons for violating the park ordinance. Uh, and then if people still remained, to um, be arrested for trespass. Do you have a criminal record? No. Objection, Your Honor. All right, I'll withdraw that. I'll withdraw that. Members of the jury, whether or not the defendant has a, a criminal record is, is, is not for your, your consideration. Uh, individual criminal records are uh, introduced on a very, very limited basis uh, and generally uh, they're screened by the court before topic comes up. So we're not going to, don't think of, you know, each defendant is presumed innocent as they walk into the courtroom. Let's just keep it at that, okay? You chose not to leave voluntarily. You chose not to just be satisfied with curfew violation. You chose to stay there and to be arrested for trespass, right? Right. Now's your chance. Tell the jury why. The first reason is that I shouldn't have to leave when I'm protesting in a public park. I believe that my that my right to free speech and my right to assembly 
carries far more weight than a park curfew ordinance. More importantly, I believe very strongly in what I was doing that night, and I felt morally obligated to stay in the park. What message would it have sent if I had left? It would have sent the message that I have the right to speak out against economic and social oppression only at those times when it is convenient to those in power. If I had chosen to leave the park, it would have also sent a message that I was abandoning those, those vulnerable, those of the vulnerable that I had met of my city, that I had formed deep human connections with. What do I mean by this? While I was in Victory Park, in Veterans Park, for five days, I saw countless numbers of homeless veterans sleeping in the park who weren't necessarily associated with the Occupy movement, who were there because they had nowhere else to go, because they felt like their country had abandoned them. While I was there, I met a homeless mother of three who was standing by the road at Victory Park and she was and she was holding a sign that said I'm homeless do I have a voice and it broke my heart cuz not only could I feel her pain but I know what it's like <coughs> to not have a voice feel like my voice is being drowned out by enormous corporate influence. I know what it's like to feel like a trespasser in my own city for gathering with others and speaking my mind. But I also know that miracles can happen when people gather together and take and choose, make a decision to take their voice and to take their power back through acts of refusal. I learned this over the course of Occupy and of Arab Spring. We saw it in, in Egypt and Tunisia, people overthrowing dictators by sitting in one spot and refusing to leave. And overthrowing dictatorships peacefully. How often does that happen? And, and here in Veterans Park, I saw what I, I've never seen done and we fed and clothed the homeless who had never, whose needs were not being met. And not only that, we led by example and we showed that it is possible for people to get together and create uh, a consensus democracy that is fair to all and that excludes none. All of this is essential to the Occupy movement. All of this could not have been expressed through another way, through voting or through petitioning the government or through leaving the park at 11 after being told to. For me, Occupy is about endurance. Occupy it's about standing up for what, what is right, even when the injustices are higher than the clouds and you can't even afford a stepladder. I, I chose to stay in the park for those reasons. And had I the choice over again, if I had to relive that moment every day for the rest of my life, I would still Stand by my principles. Choose not to leave the park. Now, you were talking about uh, earlier about your decision to move to from Victory to Veterans Park. Was that something that everybody agreed upon in the in the group? Yes, we reached consensus about that. And I was proud of that. Okay. And if you don't reach consensus, does that mean it doesn't happen until a consensus is reached? I mean, people could individually move their tents if they if they wanted to. But, but Occupy is based upon the premise of coming to a consensus. Absolutely. Correct. And it would be a consensus before you're supposed to be doing anything. Yes. 
Now, you had talked about um, on, on direct examination that occupiers comply when the police ask for anything, correct? That was your testimony? Um, yes, they, yeah, we, we complied when they asked to move, uh, move parks out of respect for the foot race. We, had, we complied when they uh, wanted us to turn down the drumming. That's the only two occasions they really know of. Okay. Um, but you guys had a respectful mutual relationship between you guys and the police officers. Correct. And um, as you said, the occupiers, that you guys complied when the police were asking for anything. Correct. And you would agree with me that Captain Cunha was very respectful when he came in and spoke with you guys? Correct. And he was, uh, and, and he spoke, like, kind of in the tones he was here testifying to. Like, he, that's his manner. I was very impressed by him. Okay. And he asked you guys to leave? Yes. And so you didn't comply with that order? I did not. And you would agree with me that you had many opportunities to leave before before being arrested. Correct. And you were asked multiple times, you know, please leave the park. Correct. And you chose not to. I chose not to. Now, you're aware that you don't have the absolute right to free speech anywhere, anytime, in any place, aren't you? Objection. May we approach? Sorry about that. Do you remember my question? Do you need me to repeat it? I would like you to repeat it. All right. Are you aware that you don't have the absolute right to free speech anywhere, anytime, in any place that you want it? Legally? Yes. Correct. Okay. So you're aware that you don't have that absolute right? Not absolutely. Not under, like, the Constitution. Like, yeah. 